just a girl and her pony doesn't get much better than that hey pheasant lane fam hope you're doing well my name is robert and this is pheasant lane farm it's a little early 6 30 in the morning uh supposed to be hot today got out here got all the chores done uh, made sure all the animals got extra water buckets and we are about to take a little 500 mile road trip 250 miles there 250 miles back so oddly enough we have cattle hogs goats horses for the last four years we haven't had a stock trailer uh, we kind of got out of livestock for a while life kind of got in the way i moved <clears throat> and uh so when amber and i bought this place two years ago i knew it was something that's gonna be on the list we just kept trying to put it off as much as possible so people get really offended when you strap a pig down on a flatbed trailer and take it to the meat locker i'm joking that's a joke i've never strapped an animal down on anything but what we did today um seven eight weeks ago i ordered a stock trailer they called me it's done today kiddo doesn't know anything about it uh, every time i see an old rusted out stock trailer on the side of the road i ask her if she wants to stop and see if they want to sell it and she used to be like okay now she just rolls her eyes at me i even told her the last week like hey mommy and i bought you a stock trailer and she just rolls her eyes she thinks i'm full of crap so uh it could be interesting either it's gonna go one way or the other but um we'll get more than that later i think they're waiting up on me at the house like i said all the animals are done um we live here in northwest ohio we're going almost over to the illinois line to pick this trailer up and we'll go over it later uh, i put a lot of thought into it i wanted a trailer that worked well for cattle hogs horses um, I wanted a little tack room in the front to keep everything kind of separated. Um, if I have to, a trailer that I can, you know, throw an AC unit in and some windows down the line. If we go trail riding, we have a place to crash for the night that's comfy. Um, I'm done doing tent stuff. So uh, that's that. I would really like a nice aluminum trailer, but that was out of my budget. Um, an aluminum bumper pole right now, 16 foot, is going to run you 20 grand. <clears throat> a gooseneck with a little tack room and stuff is going to run you anywhere from 30 to 60 thousand. So. Just couldn't afford that as out of the budget and uh that's what we're gonna do so i'm gonna go jump in the truck we got about uh i think it's a four and a half hour drive they said to get there and it's nice we always um uh, seems like we're always going north or south uh it's been a while since i've been over in indiana we don't live that far from it so um nice views looking to have a good time with the family amber took the day off and hopefully kiddos surprised Well, there she is. Thanks to YouTube Magic. It's been about three weeks since uh, kiddo Amber and I drove to Crawfordsville, Indiana to Murphy Trailer Sales to pick up this trailer. First thing I wanna say is the experience was top notch. Um, I usually don't praise businesses. I know, you know, you kinda go into a business thinking that it's their job to do a good job. And uh, the service was unreal top notch you would have thought that we bought a three hundred thousand dollar trailer um i just cannot thank rob king enough for about a month maybe a month and a half i was messaging back and forth we'd make phone calls trying to design a trailer sight unseen that's equally well for hauling cattle horses and pigs uh, it's not an easy feat to do my family owned a trailer sales for a while and uh my grandfather owned a, a semi trailer sales for i don't know 60 years about time it's been dead still today and just now the breeze picked up it's in the high 90s high humidity it feels fantastic so uh just enjoying that for a quick second but it's hard to design a trailer kind of sight unseen i know a lot of people have stock trailers for their livestock they have horse trailers for their horses frankly i'm not gonna lie i just don't have that in the budget right now um, i wish we did but this trailer is going to be everything that we need it to be everything we want it to be and um, how it is now is probably not how it's always gonna look, but we'll get into that towards the end of the video. But Rob King, man, the guy is fantastic. Um, from the moment we pulled in, he was standing there waiting for us and everything we wanted, we needed. The guy bent over backwards for us. So even though we were buying kind of one of the cheaper trailers they sell, um, 
inexpensive, I guess I should say, top-notch service. He had this pulled up to the front door next to a $150,000, $200,000 four-star, and the service was the same, and I really appreciate that. So let's get into this trailer. Our original plan and our original budget was more towards around a 16-foot, 18-foot bumper pull stock trailer. And uh, we were kind of looking online, trying to find a used trailer. And just like with everything in the world right now, prices are nuts. There were literally trailers I found, 18-foot bumper poles, from the 80s, like the late 80s, that uh, needed floors, needed tires, needed wheels, rusted out. And these people are still asking ten, twelve thousand dollars $12,000 for them. There are aluminum trailers I found from the early 90s, beat to crap. People are still asking twenty, twenty-five thousand $25,000 for them. And the thing is they're going quick. It's not like, you know, there's one thing to ask for a price. And there's another thing to sell it, but uh, trailers are going up. I tried to buy a couple used trailers and before I could even message them within five minutes of these guys posting them, they sent me a message back said, Hey man, sorry. Somebody said they'd take that trailer sight unseen. They're sending me a check tomorrow. Hey, I respect that. That's just the way the market is right now. So we got thinking and I said, you know what? I can't afford an aluminum trailer. Um, a lot of these used trailers, you don't know what you're getting. So I started researching what's the best steel trailer brand. And uh, a lot of people you talk to, a lot of forums I read, um, actually it's Corn Pro. Now my family sold horse trailers for a long time. My grandfather's been selling semi trailers, custom trailers, all that stuff for 70 years. He got out of it a few years back. Back when I was younger, Corn Pro was kind of an eh, you know, a very entry level trailer, not built well. Their paint was a big problem. So when I told my mom and dad, I think we we're going to buy a Corn Pro, uh, they looked at me like I was crazy. I said, no, do some research. When you research the best, you know, commercial steel trailer out there, Corn Pro is often listed the top one or the top two. So I called around to a lot of local dealers here in Ohio that sell corn pro flatbeds you know equipment trailers they said hey man we can't get you a trailer for at least a year <clears throat> somehow murphy trailer sales popped up on a facebook feed i gave them a call i kept seeing their ads um, their name on pictures on websites i was looking for to buy new trailers so i said you know what i'm not finding exactly what i want i'm gonna give them a call maybe there's some flexibility i need a trailer that's going to work for cattle horses hogs um you know have a tack room in it something i can put some windows in at some point drop an ac unit if we go on a trail ride or an overnight show i'm not sweating in a tent you know so i called rob and from the minute he picked up the phone we just kind of hit it off i messaged him back and forth for a long time and this is what we came up with so this is a 2022 corn pro 20 foot stock trailer now we cut we made some changes so there's a whole list here let's go over the changes we made I wanted something that would haul four horses at most. Most of the time it's going to have two in it, maybe three, possibly four. Um, my mom's mare's in full right now. Kiddo's got the two minis. I'd really like to get back into mules. That's what my family was kind of big in when I was a kid, draft mules, riding mules. So I want to have something where the whole family can go trail ride. I didn't want to buy too small and regret it. The other stipulation, kiddo really wanted a tack room and I get it. We've borrowed some stock trailers from people and she goes, well, where does my saddle go? Where's my stuff going to go? I said, you got a good point there. So I called Rob. I said, can we take a 20 foot stock trailer? Or actually I was looking at an 18. I said, how big do I have to go to fit four horses in it comfortably? He said 20 feet on the floor if you want to have a little tack room. So that's what we did. This tack room, I'll show you some pictures, add some videos in here as I'm talking, <coughs> excuse me. I got a three foot short wall in here, which leaves me 17 feet of floor, floor space. Now online, I looked at a bunch of trailers I knew I couldn't afford just to kind of get dimensions. Uh, four star, a 17 foot is what they call like a four horse. A lot of other brands. This doesn't have a back tack, anything like that. I wanted something, like I said, where it works equally well, whether I'm hauling horses through a show or I'm going to buy calves or I'm taking uh, beef to market not to market everything we grow is for ourselves, but you get the idea so here are some of the changes we made with this trailer it started out as a 20 foot corn pro stock um, they usually come about six foot wide i wanted 20 feet long i said make it seven wide which they call a six eight because that's interior dimensions <clears throat> and then we start talking about axles it wasn't that much to bump this up to two 6k axles these are uh, dexter's i believe torsion axles um, the tires, 235, 80, R16, 10 plies. 
we're gonna take a moment life lights flying over so I hope uh, hope everybody's okay after my accident every time I see one of those I say a little silent prayer for whoever's in there because they're probably having a bad day probably heading to Toledo Hospital um, electric Blake Blake's uh, electric brakes all four wheels um, these come like I said six wide six foot tall standard or six and a half tall I said hey horses I need seven foot tall 525 bucks to bump this trailer to a seven foot tall trailer um, and then like I said we bumped it to seven wide I wanted a full swing rear door but I also wanted a slider in it uh, for pigs I thought that would probably work perfect um, here's the other thing this does have a center cut gate that you can see right here more importantly um, I went and bought some pigs once I bought a boar a female was in heat I had to keep them separated it was a pain in the butt and uh, I was like I want a cut gate and I want a slider in it for pigs so I thought it was gonna be you start making changes to a trailer it starts adding up real quick it's $267 through the corn pro dealer <coughs> excuse me to uh, add a center cut gate in or a slider in the center cut gate and like I said we'll show you that here in a minute way cheaper than I thought it was gonna be the tack wall I called Rob and I go hey we uh, I need to have a tack room uh, something that I can maybe finish out in the future add an AC run some electrical in it something where um, kiddo can sleep on a cot my wife and I can have a bed in the front uh, have a little sink in there have some storage for clothes you know somewhere if it's raining or it's hot we can get out of the weather and I thought man that's gonna be outrageous five hundred and forty dollars to add a tack room wall Rob said hey there's two options you can have it where it swings so then you have the full 20 foot open floor space <clears throat> or we can just weld it solid not seeing this trailer in person I said why don't we make it swinging it can always have it welded solid later and that's what we did here's another thing I wanted we do haul livestock in the winter I try not to because we live in northern Ohio the salt on the roads but uh, I said do you guys make an option where I can put plexiglass in here they call it a smooth skin option it kind of changes I'll get you better shots of that and I'm thinking man this is gonna be expensive to take their like corrugated metal add a smooth steel to it and um, it was three hundred and twenty five dollars to where I can run plexiglass on both sides of this trailer in the rear door you name it <clears throat> I can have it nice and cool or excuse me nice and uh, warm for these animals in the winter if I do have to go pick something up in the winter so I designed this trailer down to the ties uh, you can never have too many tie areas on a trailer there are four on this side there excuse me yeah one two three four to the back of the trailer on the other side there's five and I even went as far as adding nine ties to the inside of the trailer um, sometimes you just need a place to throw a hay bag or you need a place to hook something or if you just want to hang sideways in a hammock um, it was super cheap I think it was seven dollars and fifty cents for each additional tie inside and outside the trailer the color a lot of people run these dark gray trailers um, you see a lot of the corn pros that are either red or the dark gunmetal gray I wanted something a little different I saw a bumper pull of this trailer online I called Rob and I go hey what's this trailer and he goes um, that's a silver the silver is the only one that from the factory you get the black wheels because the white doesn't look right on it I go give me that give me a spare tire um, I kind of like the look of the silver black something just a little bit different so the base price on this trailer before I made any changes was twelve thousand nine hundred dollars I'm not bragging I know most of you that probably watch this channel have trailers that are way more way fancier than that we're working with a budget I'm retired right now I'm a full-time college student which I'm blessed to have that opportunity after all the stuff I've been through um, and you know we're we're in really just payoff mode trying to pay off a lot of stuff around here you always have unexpected things that pop up like today I had to go put new tires on the super duty um, you know tires are outrageous right now just like everything else <clears throat> I actually got a little bit of back pay that I didn't really know was coming so we set that back kept adding to it and um, this trailer specced out the whole way it is was fourteen six eighty four before taxes. So let's start at the front of the trailer. We'll work our way back. I'll just kind of explain things to you um, from the B and W B and W coupler to the front, which I was figured they'd have like a bulldog. I didn't expect a Corn Pro to have a B and W 
coupler on it <clears throat> all the way back and we'll uh, try and wrap this video up. It's hot out here and I know uh, people don't like to watch long videos. So let's start at the front and work our way back. So starting at the front of the trailer, uh, like I said, there is a B&W uh, gooseneck coupler on this trailer. I was kind of excited to see the Diamond C's I buy, um, the flatbed, the dump trailer. Those usually have like Bulldog or some other company on there. So it's kind of excited to see a B&W on here. Uh, those guys make fantastic stuff. Yes, it's not chained to my truck. I always use my safety chains. The trailer was parked over here. I just hooked up to it today. They're calling for more rain. I want to get it back in the barn. So it's hooked to the truck. Uh, chains just aren't connected. The beautiful paint. I just love this color. Um, you know, there's not much. It's a pretty basic trailer. Um, the trim on it's nice. The welds on it look nice. I found one spot uh, that welds look a little lacking, I guess you could say, for a better uh, for a better term. Um, but it's on the back corner. You don't really see it. I had the trailer a couple weeks before I noticed it. Every other weld on this trailer I found was just fantastic. There is a bulldog jack on the front of the trailer. Just one in the middle. Most horse trailers do have that unless it's very large. Uh, I kind of got spoiled used to the Diamond C that has dual jacks on our gooseneck flatbed, but that works absolutely just fine. Go back here a little bit. Um, we'll walk back here and uh, we will show you kind of the tack room area. Another thing I want to mention is every single light on this trailer is LED. They're the real tiny uh, button lights. They're super bright at night. Uh, there's marker lights up on the front, on the back, and the really big bright LEDs on the back of the trailer are the big ovals just like on the back of the Bradford built there so usually if this was just a stock trailer this door would have slats in it just like the rest of the trailer here's one thing I guess uh, I should have done but like I said I wasn't sure if I wanted that wall welded solid I wasn't sure how much room is gonna be inside the trailer till you see it for hauling cows stuff like that there is an option I believe it's $500 to have them put an RV style fiberglass I believe it's color match door on here I wish I would have done that knowing what I know now, but I didn't, it is what it is. So this is a heavy duty, it's sealed. Uh, we've been through a couple of rainstorms. There's no water on the inside. I'm gonna warn you, uh, I always clean out the back of the trailer as soon as we use it. The inside here, kiddos kind of in and out. We're getting ready for our county fair. Stuff's coming out of the trailer, stuff's been going in. Um, so it's a little messy right now, but we'll give you an idea. So like I mentioned, uh, this trailer has a three foot short wall over there, uh, comes back to, uh, what is it, seven or eight feet on this side. Right now, just got some ugly pink carpet in there that was a uh, space rug or area rug, I guess you call it, in kiddos' old room. So we got an easy up tent somebody gave us for free, it was brand new, very thankful for that. Some buckets, some lung, lunge lines, some chairs, some fans getting ready for our uh, local county fair. Up here, that is a gate. Let me get up there and show you that uh, in the gooseneck. A lot of people, you know, we put little calves up there or just keep things from falling out. That will be removed now that uh, we're gonna use this for uh, kind of a miniature living quarters area. Whew, I thought it was hot outside. So real quick, uh, this is the gooseneck area. It is the full width of the trailer. Um, and I believe you have, You have about five feet before it starts to bevel around uh, and it's not a tapered nose it's like a full width so there's room to put a nice mattress up here we're gonna have some cabinets put here finish it all insulation uh you know you name it i have a good friend who's a finished carpenter who would love to uh do this project with us that in turn with robert zucker who i want to make some changes uh, completely weld this wall in i think this will be a perfect little weekender type trailer have a little sink in here um i don't even care if it has a refrigerator or just you know a cooler um somewhere where if it's hot you can get out of the heat you can spend the night you're not sleeping in a tent um so i think this will be a this will be a very very fun project add some windows in here um, but right now, it, the way it came um, was with this calf gate, I guess you could call it, that locks into place up there. Right now, I don't have the pins uh, locked with my bum arm. It's really hard to get those pins unlocked. So this might get taken out anytime here. We don't need it for anything. Um, and I might make a little kind of partition gate for moving pigs around. So real quick, I brought the tape measure in here. 
Um, short wall is a little over 36 inches, I do believe. And the long side of the wall here, which was is the door side, so the passenger side of this trailer, which I like more than having a driver's side entry to most trailers. Uh, if you break down on the highway, you have to get something. Yeah, bad news bears. Um, is actually seven foot six. So there is enough room in here to make a real small living quarters. And like I said, I'm just looking to get out of the heat, get out of the rain, have an AC, um, have a place to get some water, change your clothes, kick back, and get a good night's sleep uh, where you're not out sleeping in a tent. So it's a disaster right now. That's the way it goes. Let's go to the back of the trailer and show you uh, kind of the meat and potatoes of this trailer. All right, so here's the back of the trailer. One thing I really wanted, I didn't want a solid rear door. Um, if I want to, I can make that happen with plexiglass. There is a track at the top and the bottom to put plexiglass sheets in there. Um, there is a slider on this door, so what I'm gonna do, I don't have anybody helping me film today, so I'm just gonna kinda open the door, show you which way it opens up, jump in the trailer. Right now, uh, because I'd cleaned the trailer out with a little bit of sawdust that was in there, the center cut gate is open. Um, I'll shut that for you, and then we'll move further inside the trailer. Open this up again. Um, I believe you can get the stall mats as an option. Uh, I just went and added those in ourselves. To do this 17 foot on the long wall, the head side of this trailer took me uh, four stall mats and then a took me half of a fifth one to fill in that seven and three quarter inch gap there. So as you can see, I forgot, left the blower and a manure fork in here. But what you see ahead of you, that is the wall for the tack room that we were just in. Let me move the blower here and show you how this gate shuts. There is a uh, little latch mechanism up there, right there, that holds that gate shut. So we'll show you how that works. Just pick it up. All right, so now the center cut gate is closed. You can use this one of two ways. Um, because of the size it is, because of where we had them put it in the trailer, I can use it kind of as a stud stall, haul two horses back here, one up there. Um, I can haul two horses back here, two smaller horses up front, or we can leave it in the locked open position and haul four horses. So it's very versatile. So it's kind of loud. There is a slam latch right here. You can open from the inside or outside of the trailer with that lever. And then there is the slider and that gate, which I really wanted. So let me get in there. I'll show you uh, closing that gate. Like I said, it's a little loud. It is a steel trailer. And uh, we'll move that slider back and forth and kind of show you how much room there is inside this 20 foot stock trailer. So, like I said, there's a swing door, you slide it, uh, it'll latch. It's probably louder on camera than what it is in person. And then here's our slider. I've seen some other trailers that offer slider options and they're not as wide as this. We'll go ahead and get a measurement um, how wide this is. That is 36 inches wide from the two narrowest points. So I know depth perception on videos is really weird. So let's go over this real quick. From this cut gate right here to the front of that wall where that pool noodle is. The pool noodle was actually my attempt to keep uh, one of kiddos ponies from kicking sawdust up into the tack area. And eh, it worked okay. Uh, I'm about 8'3". Back here, uh, I'm a little longer, um, you know, just how the gate had to be set up. So, this is not centered in the trailer because the way I ordered this trailer, that swinging tack room wall will swing all the way open, pin shut up here. That way you have the full 20 feet if you want to haul cattle, pigs, and still have a center cut gate. Now, the way this trailer is going to be used most of the time... Um, kiddo's first jackpot we took her to uh, with this trailer we just hauled two horses so one up there one back here <coughs> excuse me a county fair we're going to uh we're taking three so the two small ones can go up there i still have a center cut gate haul one back here 
from talking to these people that haul all over the country at rodeos uh, this year, last year, when we started looking into trailers, um, a lot of people are going to the box stall type trailers. A lot of people aren't even tying their horses in there. These horses that are on the road all the time. Um, I don't ever plan on hauling that far, but it's nice to have options. So that is that. Um, over here to my left, sorry, the autofocus is doing something funky. The smooth skin gives you this track right here. So instead of having two different pieces of plexiglass, one for the bottom track, one for the top track, it'll actually tuck in here and then go up and tuck into here. Um, we don't need that here for a while. Uh, and the price of plexiglass, just like, I don't even know why I keep comparing it. The price of everything right now is absolutely nuts. So as you probably saw right there, there is one run in this whole trailer and it's in the cut gate. Now, it's probably just because they had the door shut when they painted it. I don't care about that at all. It's a, it's a stock trailer. It's going to get beat up. Also, while we're in here, there are one, two, three. I believe there's four or five LED lights. Uh, the truck's not on right now or they won't turn on. But uh, very nice to have. There's a couple up in the tack room. There's one on the other side of this room or that slider over there. So let's jump out of the trailer because it's getting hot in here. And uh, we'll wrap up this video. So I tried to shoot the ending of this video and uh, keep getting interrupted by life lights. I'm not complaining at all. I don't know what you call them where you are up here. Life light. Uh, there's a couple big hospital chains that chains. They all have their own um, helicopter kind of critical care emergency transports. We call them life lights. And uh, man, whoever's in those is having a really bad day. So if you don't mind, say a prayer for those guys up there. I'm sure they could use it. So I hope that uh, this was a pretty good overview of this 2022 Corn Pro stock trailer that we kind of just added bits and pieces to to kind of make what's going to fit our needs. Uh, a lot of people try and design a trailer and then keep changing it around. I tried to come up with a strict budget and then make the trailer that worked for us. Don't get me wrong, I would love to have a really nice aluminum stock trailer that's never going to rust. Um, the problem is, and I'm not ashamed to say this, we just can't afford it. Um, this trailer is under $15,000, which is, oh, get me wrong, that's a ton of money right now uh, for anybody. If you're watching this video and $15,000 isn't a lot of money for you, then hey, man, thanks for watching, but we're in different leagues. But um, I needed something that was going to work well for multiple uses. I think we did, I think we did just fine on how the design was. Um, for the criteria that I gave Rob King at Murphy Trailer Sales. Um, I pulled into that jackpot last weekend with Kiddo, parked next to a guy who had a nice elite. I kind of know him and his family. Uh, his daughter ropes. Uh, they do barrel horses. They train pole horses. They travel all over the country, hit up rodeos, jackpots, and stuff. And he was, like, actually checking out the trailer. So it kind of made me feel good being parked next to someone whose uh, trailer probably costs more than my house. But... That's that. I wanted something that we could pay for that we didn't have to finance. We started this farm from scratch uh, two and a half years ago. Bought the dump trailer because we were hauling so much stone in here it was cheaper to do it ourselves. That basically paid for itself in the two, first two, three months I owned it. And then a few months later I got hurt really bad. Haven't been back to work since. Uh, been retired from that job. So life just got flipped upside down. For a long time I really wasn't getting a paycheck uh, for you know, almost a year and a half. Finally, a little pension started kicking in. Uh, I'm going back to college, and uh, you know they're paying me to go back to school, which I'm very blessed for, but I didn't want another payment. Um, we were fortunate enough. We've saved and worked hard to pay that barn, uh, pay for that. We didn't have to finance that. I don't have to finance this trailer. I just think if you just got to start financing everything, life gets uh, not so fun. So I got a truck payment. I got a house payment. Uh, Amber's got a car payment. I think that's about it. Not too bad. So... This trailer, for what I wanted, for drawing it on napkins and sending it back and forth to Rob King for Murphy Trailer Sales, uh, I'm, I'm ecstatic. Um, it's always going to stay on this barn. These guys are coming back to add uh, sheeting on this side. I've changed the design since we built the barn last uh, October. So the trailer will always be out of the weather unless we're using it. And uh, there's three things I'd change on this trailer, knowing what I know now. I wish it was two feet longer just so I could move that center cut gate back and make a little bit more room in that front stall area. 
so I could have two and two instead of having to leave the gate open to haul four horses. It's not a big deal. I wish I would have ordered it with a solid welded tack room wall, divider wall. Not a big deal. Uh, Zooks Welding can hook me up, I'm sure. The second thing, or the third thing, the last thing, uh, I wish I would have ordered it with an RV door. I didn't want to order an RV door if I was going to put cows up front with that tack room wall open. So it is what it is. You learn as you go. I think we'll insulate this door. We'll put maybe an RV latch on it, put a window in it. It'll be a workout all right. So thank you all for watching. Arm's just not moving like it should today. Um, thank you for watching. Thanks for all your support. Uh, from the bottom of my heart, my family, it means a lot. If you're new to the channel and you like what we do, give us, uh, give us a like, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, all that good stuff. I know sometimes I get criticized for talking too much, but... If I can condense my five month long experience down to 20, 30 minutes, I have no idea how long this video is gonna go. Uh, I think it's worth it. Uh, and that's why a lot of people, they send me positive emails. Hey, you know, you don't talk too much. We like the information. People can learn from your experiences. So that is that. I'm gonna get this thing back in the barn, do some chores, and uh, Kiddo and I might go jump in my brother's pool. Happy birthday to my brother, Kyle. Dude has been a lifesaver. Um, it's hard for me to talk about. He's been a lifesaver for everything since I got hurt. If I need him, he's here. And actually, the day I got hurt, I don't know if I said this before, my little brother's the one who found me in that roadway uh, after I got drugged down the road by that drunk driver. So, man, when you look over and say, God, please don't let it be my little brother, and that's the first person on scene to see you, I owe him a lot. So from the bottom of my heart, my family, thank you very, very much for all you do, all the support. God bless and as always, make smart decisions. Happy birthday to my brother Forrest, uh, my brother Kyle, and happy birthday uh, to my brother from another mother, Forrest, who's also been out here and really helped us out. Great guy, glad to know him. So take care everybody, and uh, I'm gonna go dip in the pool because this fat boy is sweating. All right everybody, take care.